be with me, Sylvester Chiropoli. And we are in exclusive interview with a Liberian evangelist, evangelist Joshua Milton Blay. And he is going to speak about the establishment of war and economic crimes court in Liberia. What actually is his perspective? What is his core about the establishment of war and economic crimes court in Liberia? So the evangelist will speak to us on this matter. So, evangelist, yeah. welcome to the media, uh, specifically this Poon TV and Cool FA is on the other side. Um, how how are you doing? Uh, let's start today. How are you doing? Uh, into the the friend, uh, I saw the the work that you are doing. I saw the young people that you are actually working alone with to um, bring them on the society. I think you are doing a very good work. So how are you? And how's the environment? Well, I'm good by His grace. God has been gracious. To me, I think he's giving me more than I deserve. Okay, great. And how's the how's the environment? I see, you know, young people out there walking and with them, you know, try to take them from the street, you know, uh, make it then that they, they are to be impactful positively in society. Yeah, that is our long our lifelong sentence. Okay, we have sentenced ourselves to serve in the community, especially the young children. Wonderful, good. So uh, today we are here to talk about the establishment of war and economic crimes court in Liberia. Uh, uh, you have history. Uh, the world knows exactly, you know, what you've been doing for the country and also for its people. And in terms of this current issue now in Liberia as it relates to the establishment of war and economic crimes court. Uh, you are one of the persons who cannot be left out in terms of getting your view, you know, your saying about why you make up it, what could be your core, what could be your stand. So for this reason, we have come to hear from you as to what is your stand? Uh, what do you make of the establishment of the war and economic crimes court in Liberia? Well, I want to welcome the both of you, uh, cool, and, cool and Smooth Spoon TV. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my view is already known by the public, okay. and I have all the war and economic crimes court. I think it's the best that will happen for Liberia in recent time. Hmm. Many, and so I want to say kudos, kudos to the, the lower house. The House who, of Representatives. Who have, have, uh, have uh, with no reservation, passed this bill. And uh, I pray that the upper house will do the same. Great. So uh, there are also uh, different views uh, people have uh, in terms of um, the, this new government, especially uh, the statement from uh, Grand Jeddah County Senator, Senator uh, Yaya, They're talking about uh, the government should not prioritize the establishment of war in economic crown court. Uh, do, do you think uh, breaking the code to Liberia has impact. What impact could that be? Definitely, it has impact. It has the impact of Liberia forward march. The the impact that is going to help Liberia move forward. Impunity is a disease that stops development. Many people say uh, we should focus on development and not war crime court. It's, they might not know what they say. From my understanding, as a spirit, 
tastes. I know that anything that will affect the physical must start from the realm of the spirit. And the blood of innocent people that are speaking up in the air is sufficient to stop billion dollar investment. The good book said, anybody who cover their sin will never prosper. So rejecting the war crime code is covering our sin, is in knowing the wrong we have done as a nation and as people. So to overlook it, we are covering it. And once we cover it, we will not prosper, period. We can have billion dollars investment coming, trillion dollars investment coming. One those blood that was spilled are not a peace. Nothing good will come from out of us. It's a clear thing. And uh, many people have been politicizing this. When UP was in power, they said, Honor Madam Ellen Selene Johnson, they said there was no need for war crime court when the CDC, the CDC government or party was advocating for the war crime court. When the table turned and CDC came in power, they had all the power to bring in the war crime court. They refused it. Now, Unity Party at the time that said there was no need for war crime court was crying for the war crime court. And so when the table turned again, everybody expected that UP was going to say, let's wait yet. But thank God, Mr. Joseph Nima Boakai, Ambassador Joseph Nima Boakai, President of the Republic of Liberia, did not drop the hope, that's the hope of the people. And he decided to agree, in fact, before him, run for the war, I think he done great. And the lower house or the house of representative have also done the same. Many Liberians believe when the war crime court come, there will be war. I want you to know there will be no war. So uh, my question comes in, um, I'm Teofilos from Who FM. Uh, you, you, you know your history uh, during the, the, the 14 years of civil war in Liberia, and uh, you have been linked with several history. Uh, don't you think if, uh, if this court is established in Liberia, you might go to jail as well, sir? Well, I am not the judge. I know when the court comes, I will go to the court. And I'm going to explain just how I explained to the TRC. I'm going to submit myself. And the judges will decide. Many people believe going to the war crime court means going to jail. There are so many people who've gone to the war crime court and they came back from the war crime court. President Bagbo went to the war crime court. He was taken to the head and he came back. One Kenya president went to the war crime court and he came back. And every one of us that will be going to the World Crime Code, like some of us who were lead players, key players, the chance of us coming back is very slim. But still, there are some of us who may come back. But that is left with the judge. That is left with the judges. And even if I was killed after being declared guilty, my one life would not, is not better for the thousands of that I'm wasted. I regret it, yes, but my one life is not more important than each, than any of the life that was taken by me directly or indirectly. And so I don't think it's an issue about me going and coming back or staying there. So, um, I, I know you would be very optimistic and I mean, uh, someone may say you are really speaking the facts, um, especially uh, knowing your history and admitting that uh, what you, you've done in the past uh, just because of you 
uh, covering such you know things you know it will not be good do you think uh, today if you were called to go um, to justify do you think uh, you will be exonerated no there's no justification i have no justification for the wrong that i did no justification i'm guilty as charged you see Last night I was following the spoon and when my honorable man started speaking from his posture, I ended, you know, I started, I did not end the view, I did not end following spoon because the arrogance that were displaying there is uncalled for. In fact, those are the arrogant that is going to take most of us to jail because no wrong of anybody today can make our wrong yesterday right our wrong is wrong and while the war crime code come hastily and is declared wrong or it comes slowly it declare wrong it come 50 years from now, is declared wrong. It come two days after the war got finished, is declared right. It will not make our wrong yesterday right. So our wrong is wrong. We had the opportunity. I think the opportunity was not utilized. Through the CDC government, sir? No, the opportunity to answer to the truth and reconciliation. Okay. okay. The goal for any civilized thinker after crisis is closure, is conclusion. And in that conclusion, what brings a perfect closure and why the crisis? If you understand why the crisis, you can craft policies to avoid, avoid reoccurring of that crisis. And so the truth and reconciliation was a medium by which we would have told the Liberian people the complete story of how and why the war came. And Liberia would have decided to put things in place to stop reoccurring. But we all went there and abused the process. Some of us said Liberian people should even pay us. Some of us said we're defending our people. And I think they are all wrong approach. And because of that, there was no closure to the crisis. So things are hanging. Everybody afraid. Look at what passed us. Look at the, the six years that passed us. People carelessly did things because they know that whatever they did, if we did not answer for our past, nobody will answer for their past. And if nobody answer for our past again, there is no guarantee that this government or governments after it will take precautions on things they do. Wow. And so there is need for the world. There is need for the war crimes court. There is need. So, so, so now, uh, why do you think uh, people who know very well that uh, they did wrong uh, in the past in Liberia, but yet still they are opposing the establishment of the war and economic crimes court in Liberia? Because two of the individuals, I would say, uh, is the Grand Jeder County Senator, uh, Senator Thomas Yaya Nimle. And of course, um, Nimba County Senator Prince Johnson, who is now really clear whether um, 
the, 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 the coach should be established now or later on. But whenever his colleagues present the matter, you know, he gets angry. Um, what do you guys make of this? Well, most of the time, Honorable Johnson anger comes from provo provocation. Provocation. Because he sees that most of those people who talk about war crime code, war crime code, do not really have La Vira interest. And they, most of the time, they only do it because it's politics. Is it only Prince Johnson alone that have to agree for war crime code to come? No. It's the entire Liberia populace. The people who were really hurt that supposed to cry to the international community are those people who are in the Gobachon market. Four o'clock, those people leave their homes to take potato green to the Gobachon market to sell. They leave from there by eight o'clock in the evening. They go to their house, cook food for their children to eat, go back to go harvest, to go rest for maybe two, three hours. One o'clock, they own the farm again, harvesting green for them to go back. Those are the people that they should be going to to encourage to stand for the war crime code. They're not doing it. <clears throat> Only when they see him and they see other, you know, lawmakers is when. So most of them are politicizing, you know, the issue and it's irritating. Even us that agree for it, we agree for it because we see the bigger picture. And that's why I want the honorable, the two honorables and other perpetrators to see. If we refuse this, our children are at risk. You think so? Yes. Somebody could harm our children tomorrow and nothing will come from out of it. Uh, but so, so the, the, uh, but the war crime court, if we answer for our past, there will be deterrent that will protect our children, protect our children's children, protect even the name Blaye. Uh, but Senator Prince Johnson have said uh, bringing the war crime code is playing with the peace of Liberia. I don't see how it's playing with the peace of Liberia. Now, he may be right, and it could play with the peace if the, the understanding do not reach. And so people should be on radio. People should be in attire centers. People should be in schools. People should be in churches. People should even go on the farm and tell Liberians the importance of a complete closure to our past. If I were them, instead of challenging other people, we all would be on our knees. Because even though the government, the president, is saying he won the war crime code, he's negotiating for it. But the people that are hurt, they need to be reached to. I wish they can run to their errors, to their chiefs in their villages, go to the different error councils, the councils of the chiefs. Say, look, we want to talk to our people. Me today, I go to Nima County with our bodyguard. Mr. Yaya should be able to go to Nima County to talk to people there. Mr. Johnson should be able to go to Grand Gide to talk to people there instead of challenging, instead of, you know, <laughs> challenge. Labira sign to international and global policies. And so if what we did offend global policies, it's not only Labira issue. It's challenging, you are challenging the body that Labira signed to. You are challenging the international organ that this country signed to. So you're not just challenging the Liberian government. So now, if you miss the TRC, you can try to see if you can appeal to the people. Sir, on true FM, uh, Senator Prince Justin described the TRC, that's the Accra Peace Agreement, as bookers. It is this happening that TRC process was the effort of civil servants taxes was the effort of 
young Liberian professionals, legalists. Those people, they were not hundred percent effective, and it's because of the type of society we are in. It's not their fault. Somebody wanted them to be corrupt. They refused. And because they refused, they were not financially supported completely. It came to a time that the commissioner, I was in a safe house. The commissioner could not even keep me in a safe house after some time because the hotels that we were in. Because when we went to give our stories, people wanted to kill us. So we needed to be protected. We and other victims and few perpetrators who decided to speak the truth. And they put us in a safe room. They were supposed to feed us three times in that safe room. It came a time the hotel's owners, the, 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 the landlords for those rooms that we were in were running behind the TROC because there was no money. Money that's supposed to be given to them were not given to them because they refused to play to the throne of Ellen. I will call her name. When she wanted to, she wanted the TRC to only labor certain people. Ellen, she, former president, the Ellen former Johnson. president, Ellen Selling Johnson, wanted the TRC to labor certain people guilty. When, when, when they refused to do it, she decided to suffocate them financially. We're not small boys. We know what happened. So they made the recommendations. Now, they are rational beings. They are human beings. If you, you cannot be condemned, the hard effort of fellow Liberians. Well, that's what that's one of the things I saw Ellen make come up. You know what, what it means? That AFL people who serve this country, she disbanded them. She abused all of those efforts. How they call them? Uh, 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 the, the Lone Star who served this country many years. She abused the labor. But this bounding loose star, it was in her turn that downsizing became common. Just go to a ministry, say they are plenty, and no plans for them. Put them down and what have you. So, it's not strange, Twitter. We want to continue on that, abusing the effort of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission with all those things. Those people roll cars, those people risk their life with ex fighters who did not have perfect understanding, even myself. Because I was doing this since 1997 when I got convicted. I was going around telling people my wrong. It was easy for me to do. So I was encouraging other, I was encouraging other ex fighters. I the one who uh, 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 encourage Arab devil to go to the uh, 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 Nicola Duncan to go to the TROC. I encourage Swat Devlet, the one who the young general that led the massacre to Duporo. I encourage him to go to the TROC. I went to Sunny Quelle to encourage so many generals to come to the TROC because I knew the importance of it. People needed to know the stories. People needed to know why that amount of people die, how they die to bring a closure to, 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 to everything they were experiencing. But they went to place, never had the understanding, and their life was at risk. For you to look at those people's effort, I think it's a disservice to earnest labor, even though that's what Liberia is formed for. The people who endlessly struggling to be positive never benefit anything from this country. The ones who wake up coming on radio, cursing, cursing in no time, there will be representatives, there will be senators, there will be directors, there will be ministers in other places. And that is wrong. I think it's a disservice to the effort at TRC. So, 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 sir, um, besides uh, government uh, putting effort to uh, make sure that the war in economic crimes code is established in Liberia. Uh, what else do you think uh, can happen in Liberia to making sure that uh, those who, who who are victimized, you know, can you know can 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 feel, can feel pleased? I heard you talking about they have to be reached directly. 
What yes. else? What else do you think about? I think what? that's the major thing. Look, listen. I went for a crusade in Ganta. Life story. It's called Fear Not. It was sponsors by some American brothers. They went in Nima County and the Transfield Church, not Transfield Inline Church, war out of the crusade preparation that they can't go there because a brother in the church. An error in the church. The recent thing is recent thing, 2019. Was killed by me. So how can I can preach to him? And when he gave that position to the church, the church walked out of the crusade. I went in their morning devotion. This is life story. Ask pastors in Nimba. I walked to the inland church devotion. And knelt down before this elder, asking for forgiveness. He cried, and the whole church forgave me, and they went and became part of the program. This is life, something. Suppose, honorable Yaya, do that. Suppose, honorable, but putting this thing on is a death trap to this country, actually. So now uh, we just have a few, few more minutes to go. So, um, no, the, the Center Prince Johnson, people look up to Center Prince Johnson, uh, whatever he says, and um, you know, he has followers. Uh, to be frank, he has followers, especially in Nibar County. Of recent, he said uh, there are ex rebels, you know, ex generals, you know, with arms, you know, especially in Nibar County. Uh, so if this government tries to forcefully establish uh, the war and economic crimes code, it could be a problem because we have ex-rebels and general who still have guns and you know, could threaten the peace of Liberia. When did he say that? Uh, you said it on, on, on Truth, Truth FM. FM. When? Uh, recently. Uh, recently, I think we were at last week. In so, this region? Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, so the, the question is, uh, do you think... Uh, they are still ex generous or potential people uh, that could um, uh, make the peace that everyone is enjoying today, you know, a, a cut off the peace. Well, I'm not aware of that, but if it is so, I think they are proceeding wrong because <laughs> how they still have that gone. That means they are telling us there is actually need for war crime code. They're telling all the common librarians there is actually need for war crime code. So if they still have guns, why do they still have guns? Where did they take to take those guns from? That means everybody is at risk. So that's why the war crime code should come. <laughs> if, if Joshua is still having guns and still having the potential, the potency, potency to bring war, then there should be the war crime code because Liberia itself is not able to disarm Joshua. Liberia itself is not able to disarm those many generals. So the international body need to really, really come in to rescue us. If that's what the honorable men say, then I think uh, Mr. Bwaka should not even waste no time. The, 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 the upper house should not waste no time. Let's do everything. Let them hurry to pass the bill and leave it with the international players. Okay, uh, good. So we are just about to go. Uh, there are a few uh, names on a list, you know, uh, circulating on social media. Uh, just a number of people, a few number of people. Uh, do you think uh, there are more names uh, need to be included on the list instead of just single out? Just I think few there names? should there will be more names. What are those? Uh, do you do you have some names? Well, I don't know names. Okay. I, don't, I cannot guess the names. Okay. But my name should be there. And my name is not on that list with the five. So those five are just uh, 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 greater responsibility bearers, people who were leaders of the groups. But then after them, they're going to come to the next level who were frontline generous, I think. So... I don't, I don't, I, I have not uh, established the World Crime Code before. I have not gone to it before. I don't understand the, the workings, but I'm sure it cannot just be just fine. Looking at seven names, uh, 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 example, there are other lieutenants 
that would leave that would fall. So, on the basis of recommendations, you know, to national government. Um, what would you recommend in terms of uh, going after those, uh, quote unquote, who might have, you know, uh, fought in, uh, in, the, in the past regime or the past years and disturbed lives, you know, stole from the country? How do you think the government can, I mean, get those people uh, without witch hunting or just figure out, you know, certain individuals because, you know, they did something wrong to them? Well, I actually have not worked in government before, so I don't think I'm in the better place to advise the government. But uh, uh, justice should be cross, cut across. The corruption of now started sometime this morning. The one from this morning started sometime last night. The one from last night started sometime yesterday morning. The one from yesterday started last week, last month. So we should be able to balance the skills and go after the root of these corruptions. So my last my last question for my end, if we were to advise the Senator uh, Nima County political call father on the establishment of the war crimes court. What advice do you think you can give to Senator Prince? Honorable Senator, one of Liberian best brains, geniuses, uh, when it comes to military might and security sense, and he's also proven some political uh, uh, strength over the years. Please, force will not help any one of us. Go to your elders, call them. Let them go meet the elders of other counties. Let them appeal to the people. Be more apologetic than trying to challenge. Challenging the war crime code is challenging global value. But if you are in protections of NIMA and you want to challenge global body, you are exposing the entire NIMA to global body. And you're in Liberia, challenging the global body. You're exposing Liberia to the global body. <laughs> Imagine they're coming for me and I want to run to car in my house with all my children here. I'll be exposing all these young men to be harmed. So please, let us, let us go about it the right way instead of threatening, you know, and making... I, I, I did not listen to what you said. I went to your church and you were more apologetic. Uh, so if what they're saying is truth, I think we need to go back to the, to the table and design a different idea because this code is necessary because it's going to conclude and climax our entire world. If we have any other way to climax it and appeal the people, it is not by challenging them. I think it should be by being a political. So lastly, um, your specific message to Liberians in entirety, and also um, His Excellency President Joseph Nyumabwako on the establishment of the War and Economic Crimes Court in Liberia. Well, Liberia, <laughs> stay your ground. Stay your ground. I think this old man, know what he's doing. He's still long in government and uh, he saw some downs and ups in different times. I think he's proceeding well. Uh, uh, be confident, you need this. It is your right. Pursue it and God is going to be your helper. Thank you so much. Thank you to God bless you. Thank you. So, folks, you just uh, listen to um, Liberia's ex -law, warlord um, evangelist Joshua uh, speaking to us uh, regarding the uh, establishment of the War and Economic Crimes Court in Liberia with me, C. Sylvester Chiropoli on Spoon TV. So thanks so very kindly. Uh, if you listen to him, uh, he was really remorseful. Uh, he he admitted his wrongdoing, and uh, he supports uh, the establishment of that court in Liberia. So folks, that's it. Uh, thanks so very kindly for following.